Hello and welcome to an all new episode of the Bitcoin News Show right here on the CryptoCast Network. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, so much for joining us yet again on another Sunday to talk Bitcoin. We have a lot of topics to go through today. We're we're actually going to be um, talking about um, sort of a year-end deal. We're going to be sort of going through a little bit of a year-end review. But before we get into that, guys, uh, let's go ahead and share out the, sh the, the website here. We are sharing CryptoCast.network website where you guys can find our YouTube, Twitter, uh, Instagram, iTunes, and RSS. And we also have some merchandise if you guys want to support the channel. And, of course, we have our sharing our, our donation address so you guys can check that out because of course we are a community supported youtube channel so we really appreciate all the donations and feedback from you guys we actually just got uh, another donation the other day so again really really thank you guys for that and let's go ahead and share tone vases conference guys you got to come all the way out to las vegas nevada in january 24th to 26th it's going to be great um because who the heck wouldn't want to you know leave a, a cold winterous place anyway to go to all the way out there to las vegas so there's gonna be a lot of great people out there guys tone vase uh jimmy song you know safer dean uh willie woo trade Mayor Giacomo. It's going to be a great Bitcoin, not blockchain conference. So go ahead and check that out, guys. Uh, January 24th through 26th. I think right now there is about 48 tickets left at this current price at this tier, which is uh, $750 or 0 0.15 uh, Bitcoin. So with that aside, guys, let's stop the screen sharing, get right into your quick bit section. A lot of stuff to cover before we introduce our amazing panelists, as always. Uh, get right into it here of course guys as always you can find the links to these and everybody uh below and the show notes uh below on below the youtube channel so uh we have us officially sanctioning a couple of bitcoin addresses that was kind of crazy guys it's a little bit a little bit silly but some of these people tend uh decided to use the same two bitcoin addresses i think for th like more than three plus years so really really crazy don't ever do that guys i always reuse i was always use new new addresses for every transaction that you can and then we got uh bitgive this is really great guys and a uh, big uh, charity uh, website BitGive launches their Bitcoin donation platform 1.0 on the mainnet. They actually, um, using the platform, donations can be made with Bitcoin, allowing donors to track the progress of the funds in real time, ensuring that donations make it to the intended charity. So that's really, really great. Check that out, guys. Um, then we got the US SEC, of course, as expected, guys, delaying, you know, the Van X Bitcoin ETF until February. That was going to be expected. They're always going to delay, delay as much as they can, of course, until uh, they finally get their crap together. And then NASDAQ uh, has confirmed launch of Bitcoin futures in first half of 2019. So again, guys, just more inevitable Wall Street financialization of Bitcoin coming into play here, which will, of course, inevitably drive more liquidity. And then uh, this is pretty interesting, guys. Make sure you back up, back up your keys, back up your private keys. This is your warning, guys. Make sure you have everything backed up because we have another $170,000 of Bitcoin lost. So make sure you back up your keys. That again, guys, is a bit of a donation to the network, making everybody else's coin worth a little bit more. So very interesting there. And of course, we have a uh, lower, uh, this is a pretty interesting topic. We talked a little bit about this on the CryptoCast network before about the, the mining difficulty decrease and things like that. But basically, we um, we see that some of the lower cryptocurrency prices uh, ha and decreasing mining, mining activity has resulted uh, in, in some of these crazy, crazy 51% um, attacks on these lower end coins. So we've always predicted this. We've been telling you guys this, that these, these lower secure coins, these lower secure proof of work coins, they are going to get attacked in bear markets when there is no money to be made. Uh, on in the um, in the actual exchanges. So then we have uh, lightningspin.com. Really great, guys. This is a really cool proof of concept website for the Lightning Network. Really interesting site. Lightningspin.com just hit 10,000 paid invoices on the Lightning Network, uh, which uh, of course continues to hit new capacity highs and uh, new channel highs and everything like that. Lightning Network continues to grow. I think it grew like uh, the stats are 10,000% since since it launched earlier this year. So very interesting. Uh, then we got Jack's uh, Jack Dorsey's Cash App is number one, guys, in the app charts again. Uh, Cash App is, of course, the app that lets you buy uh, Bitcoin with your phone. Very interesting. Jack Dorsey, of course, really uh, notorious big Bitcoin bull. And then this is interesting. Everybody uh, seems to be starting cryptocurrency newsletters, guys. Uh, it seems that this is the thing to do because there's just so much noise versus signal really in the space. And uh, now MIT's Digital Currency Initiative is joining in as well with their new biweekly cryptocurrency research review publication. So check that out. That's pretty interesting. I got. I think I got enough newsletters, guys, really, to be honest, coming in my, in, my, my inbox already. It's being freaking full at this point. Um, then this is this is pretty funny, guys. Don't say you know we didn't tell you so, but it looks like uh, Ethereum permeable consensus uh, has announced that it will lay off 13% of its staff as part of a wider strategic shift. Uh, I like to say you know it's interesting that some of these Ethereum companies are pushing are, are starting to do layoffs when of course we have companies like Blockstream that has uh, nearly doubled the size of their staff this year while simultaneously launching amazing uh, proof, uh, amazing concepts that are not proof of concept, but actual amazing products that you can use in the ecosystem today. 
And then uh, along the same path, Forbes got into the four rate, the four rate there of Ethereum prices going down, I guess, because they have released a great article this week titled Crypto uh, Cryptopia and Crisis, Joe Lubin's Ethereum Experiment is a Mess. How long will he prop it up? So that was a pretty good uh, article, guys. I recommend everybody check that out. Uh, and then Blockstream, again, speaking of Blockstream, guys, they have just launched Explorer, a high-performance and accurate block explorer. Uh, really, really cool, guys. And then they decided to release the source code for it, too. So now it's completely open source. Now, this is, of course, on the back, right on the heels of already launching Liquid uh, and the repo uh, for Simplicity. So, guys, a lot of progress being made uh, this year uh, from Blockstream on Bitcoin. And then uh, Hasu has released a really uh, great article. This is the second part of his series uh, for new entrants into Bitcoin and cryptocurrency space called A Skeptic's Guide to Bitcoin. You guys got to check this out. Really, really awesome. Hasu, thank you for your amazing articles. And finally, 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 we have we have to send congratulations, guys, to our Bitcoin. Whether you like it or not, personally, I don't really use it very much, but uh, they have reached 1 million subscribers. So uh, that is, of course, a, a bit of a... Um, tool that we use to find out, you know, how how, uh, how the sentiment is around Bitcoin, how many people are, you know, being aware of Bitcoin. And now we've reached 1 million subscribers. So very interesting stuff, guys. With that, with that aside, let us go ahead and introduce our amazing panelists today. We got a lot to cover. So let's introduce first, we got Mr. Max Hillebrand from the World Crypto Network, ladies and gentlemen. Really glad to have him on the show. I met him in Honey Badger, had a great time. And finally, Max, you're on the show. Welcome. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. Uh, just as the best year of Bitcoin uh, starts to uh, to end up here in the finishing meters of this amazing sprint, uh, it's been the most beautiful year in Bitcoin uh, with the most beautiful software developments. Uh, and I'm living the dream here every single second. Super excited. Absolutely, man. Living the dream right here with you. Even in this bear market, you know, the people like longtime Bitcoiners like us, we don't really see it too much. We see the technology, we see the people, we see everything evolving. And so for us, it's just, uh, it's like a, it's, it's a continuous community. And it's really, really great to see all of this hard work um, um, coming to fruition. Uh, so thanks again, Max, for joining us. Then we got, of course, uh, Mr. Francis joining us as always. Francis Pouliot from Satoshi's Portal. Francis, how are you doing today? Oh, no. Oh. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm, uh, I just came back from a uh, two and a half weeks vacation, uh, not because of the bear market, uh, but just because I think 2019 is going to be the biggest year in Bitcoin. And I felt like I needed some rest before we tackled this crazy year. I'm super bullish as always. So I'm, I'm like, I'm a happy 2018 finished, not because it was a bad year, but just because I can't wait for 2019. Yeah, man, it's uh, I, I need to follow. I need to take a page out of your book, Francis. I've been a bit of a been a little bit burned out myself for some client work. I need to take a weekend off. So uh, maybe I'll take a little bit of a mini vacation before next year, because as Francis says, uh, it is going to be insane next year. So uh, Mr. Benny P joining us again. We've had him on the show before, a BTC Sessions, great, great YouTube channel. And I think is now working with Francis on a bunch of his projects. So how are you doing, Benny? I am fantastic. Thanks for having me. It's been a, a hell of a year, and uh, and yeah, I am. I'm working with Francis right now, and uh, very excited with the the trajectory of my career. I think everything's really starting to fall in place nicely. Yeah, man, it's never too late. You know, Benny, of course, thought he was too late when he came in in 2014. I thought I was too late when I came in 2012. Everybody thinks they're too late, but it's never, never too late. This is the great, great, greatest time right now to build, guys. And of course, accumulate that coin as much as you can. Uh, so let's get in, right? Let's get right into it then. With that aside, to our first topic here, uh, another amazing article, of course, by Mr. Aaron Van Weirdum. This guy, I mean, I've had him on the CryptoCast a couple times. Really, really one of the most phenomenal writers in the space. Continues to hold it down over there at Bitcoin Magazine. Com. Really recommend a lot of his articles, but this one is a really great one. It's sort of an end of year review. You know, we got it's called uh, Bitcoin's Tech Trends of 2018, what this year brought us. And uh, this is only part one of the article. So we're going to uh, do part two. We're going to talk about part two in the next uh, Sunday show, which of course will be the last show of the year. So let's get right into it, guys. I want to hear from, let's go with uh, Benny first. Benny, what are your thoughts on, on, on this article and sort of, you know, the year uh, uh, to date as well? I mean, I, we, we've, we've all done, gone through so much this year. Of course, we have the bear market. Of course, you got joining, you know, Francis's company. And there's just so much to talk about. But if you can uh, maybe summarize a bit, what, what, what are your thoughts? Um, I, I think it's been a great year despite, uh, well, I mean, you have people that are, are disappearing, the ones that were here for, for short, short term gains, they've all kind of been filtered out. Um, but on the, on the tech side, you see, uh, you know, continued usage of SegWit and, and the percentage use of SegWit addresses is, continues to rise. You see liquidity on lightning just go through the roof. Um, it's just, it's been 
it's been amazing to see these advancements and it, and it really reminds me um, of kind of the 2014, 2015 uh, era when, when there was a lot of FUD in the media, but really in the background, there's so much activity happening and there's so much being built. Um, it's, it's kind of refreshing to, to be able to focus on this again, instead of the constant blabber of, of price. Um, it, it, people, it, a lot more gets done in, in this kind of an environment. And I, you know, I see it with working with Francis and I see it with, um, the companies that, that focused in the right areas continue to succeed. And the companies that, uh, put resources towards, uh, we'll say, um, things that maybe they shouldn't have are, are, are being filtered out right now. And you, you can witness it happen. Um, so I, I'm, I'm loving this year. Um, I think there's a lot of great projects, and I think you're starting to see uh, a little bit more focus on 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 just Bitcoin. You're starting to see the BS get filtered out, and and I'm glad to be a part of it and see it actively happening and and trying to contribute to it. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, it's great to hear. I mean, we we have seen a lot of people, a lot of Bitcoin companies come up. We've seen a lot of work being done in the Bitcoin uh, space. A lot of progress being made. So, uh, Francis, what are you, what are your comments on this uh, on this crazy, amazing year so far? What has it meant to you, and uh, what are some of the highlights that, for for you? Well, in terms of the tech, it's been a really good year. I mean, uh, uh, the release, of, for example, of Bitcoin Core zero point seventeen. Um, I, I think maybe has been under uh, advertised or under uh, uh, it, people don't really fully realize that the improvements that have been done to Bitcoin, like building on top of Bitcoin as a as a software development company, as developers, as project managers, is becoming much, much, much easier. And also, it's becoming much easier to use Bitcoin the right way, right? So by running your own full node, uh, by using Bitcoin Core as your wallet programmatically, um, and you know, by uh, uh, there's been a lot of software that's it's not Bitcoin Core that's been built around uh, full nodes to make them more usable. Like Cypher Node is one, is just one sp project uh, as part of many. Uh, there's been uh, all sorts of software to launch the full nodes and to operate them in a way that makes it useful. For example, BTC Pay Server, like that's what it is, right? BTC Pay Server is like a supercharged full node with some software to make it easier for invoicing and all sorts of stuff. Uh, so you got also this mentality of uh, decentralization, validate yourself. Uh, run your own node. We, we've seen that being super important with, for example, the CVE bug this year. I think there was a a, a very large um, uh, consciousness, right? People are now conscious that we need to run these full nodes. Um, when we see what's happening, for example, with Ethereum, where it's become impossible to run a full node, as we had always talked about Vortex on the show, like for probably over a year and a half, like it's becoming impossible to run an Ethereum node. And now if you want to use Ethereum, you have to use Infura, which is a consensus company. Um, so Ethereum is not censorship resistant because it is impossible to use it in a censorship resistant way realistically as a user. Um, as such, it's just a bad AWS, right? It's just a really bad cloud service. Um, and that's what Bix make makes Bitcoin unique. What makes Bitcoin unique is not that you can do like super fast payments instantly, which you can obviously do. Uh, you can do a trans Bitcoin transaction it takes just a second, it takes only 10 minutes to clear, but Bitcoin's value proposition was that immutability, censorship resistance, and trustless validation, which are all a function of if you are using or not your own full nodes. That's been great. Uh, we've also had like some pretty, pretty good like security improvements like in Bitcoin. Some of the thing that, another thing that people don't realize is now you we have a new uh, a new transaction standard a transaction format called partially signed bitcoin transactions and what this allows people to do is to basically use other software like either like a hardware like cold card or a, like a phone device or anything like that uh exact exactly like max is showing and um your your bitcoin core full node can be the one who's crafting your transaction for you and that's really important because you need to check the blockchain to see like what are the inputs that I have and, uh, and what can I use to create this transaction? So you need to have access to, to blockchain for that. And the Bitcoin core node can create a transaction and send it to like a third party remote, either software or hardware device, sign it securely. So basically the, the engineers behind Bitcoin made Bitcoin core compatible with hardware wallets and with remote signing, which again, increases the usability of full nodes. Um, so, you know, when we talk about SegWit and Lightning, D these are like great improvements, but I just wanted to highlight like the software validation. It's like 
it's off the charts, man. Like downloading and synchronizing Bitcoin Core is becoming so easy, so efficient, so powerful. And all the other shit coins, like their nodes are becoming harder and harder to run. And like, forget like the, the features that all these the, the, all these coins are promoting and forget even the features that are coming into Bitcoin, you know, soon. Like we always talk about Schnorr, but we also talk about mass and smart contracting stuff. The actual just software project itself, like the, the boring parts, you know, the efficiency of it, the usability of it, it's just getting much better over time. So if you're building an application now, um, a FinTech app, and you want to integrate blockchain, um, usually, you know, people went for like Ethereum because of Web3, because it was super easy to run. And they did have like kind of well subsidized um, ecosystem of open source project that made building on Ethereum like easy. You know, they had a lot of tools. Um, oh, these are now, you know, fully into Bitcoin. So uh, what I'm going to see probably is like at hackathons, people are going to be using Bitcoin over. And, you know, I, I was talking to some developers recently and they're like, oh, we used to want to do an ICO and a, a thing. But now like we, you know, we listen to you guys on Twitter and now now I want to do lightning in my in my app. Fuck the ICO, fuck the token, you know, oh, sorry. Um, PG-13, oops. Um, but, you know, screw, screw these things. Uh, I, I want to build on Bitcoin. And, you know, like I think the narrative that we put out on Twitter about like Bitcoin first and focus on the core value proposition, it resonates with a lot of people. It made sense. And now since a lot of people are that are smart and we all kind of agree with each other on that, there's like a kind of consensus of smart people that we should focus on Bitcoin and focus on the core value proposition, focus on, you know, making the Bitcoin standard and building something that lasts hundreds of years and that all the bullshit has been weeded out. Um, that encourages a lot of other people to also accept this narrative as being the, the right narrative. Like I went to a conference, I was announcing bull Bitcoin, which we'll talk about later, but I went to, you know, I announced like, uh, you know, no ICOs, no blockchain tech, that's not Bitcoin, no nothing like that. We're just going to focus on that one thing. And everybody's like, yeah, that sounds like a good plan. You know, it sounds like a really good, you know, strategy to not get dis distracted. So, you know, Bitcoin's Bitcoin on. And even without the feature, it has survived and the software works super well. And there's like, apart from like that one bug, there's like, it's not buggy. Bitcoin's not, Bitcoin is a great software project. I mean, that makes me super bullish. So, Bitcoin doesn't need to even change and add new features. As far as I'm concerned, like Bitcoin's like good for, you know, for decades, you know, as, as it stands now. But what's crazy is like, we know it's going to get better, uh, but it doesn't have to. It's like good enough for me at this point. Bitcoin is like pretty, pretty good shape right now. Yeah, so much, so much to unpack there, uh, Francis. So many great points, man. Really quick, I just do want to highlight a couple things. So before we get to Max, uh, there's just some great stuff in there. Really, um, it's really important to remember that there's so many other things in addition to just SegWit and Lightning. Like Francis said, we do have partially signed transactions. We have Schnorr coming down the lines. There's been amazing privacy improvements, but there's just there's other stuff, and this is it doesn't stop. Like Francis says, and I agree, Bitcoin technically could could just ossify right now and still be good. I mean, the base layer is is really really solid, really really secure, but but it could, it could ossify tomorrow and I'd be okay with that because there is so much uh, innovation at the edges now happening that are just building additional layers on top of this, like like with Lightning, like with uh, Liquid. Uh, there's just so much to come. So, and then uh, another great point is Infura. You know, I mean, holy crap, while Bitcoin continues uh, to sink faster and <laughs> propagate blocks faster than anything else, you have Infura. Like the number one article on Coindesk right now, if you go, is like something like, um, the race is on to, to replace Ethereum's most centralized part. And it's like, dude, they are, they're even admitting it now. They like, they're understanding admittedly full, full heartedly on a mainstream coin desk articles that Ethereum is just jacked. Like it is just on un unoperable and unscalable. And so they're trying to, um, you know, uh, you know, sort of make it seem like it's, it's just centralized. That's all it is. We, we can fix that. And of course you can't. So it's kind of crazy. So that was a great, interesting point, Francis. And then really the final point I want to make before we go to uh, Max is just this freaking amount of money that people have spent to support these altcoins, it is just drowning these companies in expenses and extra expenses. And you, believe me, after this bear market, everybody will still rethink. Of course, there's going to be still altcoins. Of course, there's still going to be penny stocks, blah, blah, blah. Of course. But I guarantee you that large institutions like Coinbase are, and larger companies are going to have to rethink uh, uh, um, the amount of work they put into because it's just simply not worth it. The amount of security risk, the amount of uh, cost of development, uh, the amount of, uh, uh, you know, all of these things add up over time when it, when it, when it comes to supporting these altcoins. And these companies are figuring this out real fast. So to see companies like that we'll talk about later, you know, Francis's bull Bitcoin that uh, decides to just focus on Bitcoin only 
you know, these are the companies that are going to rise out of the ashes. These are going to be the Amazons, the Facebooks. These are going to be the new Fang stocks. It's these companies that, that put store value and Bitcoin for the right reasons up first. And so we're, you know, I think Bitcoin bull is a good example of that. So just that's just my thoughts. I actually have more, but we're going to go to Max first. Max, uh, I'm really excited to really finally have you on the show, man. Like you, you're, you're holding it down over there at World Crypto Network, really uh, doing some great content, some fantastic content. In fact, um, almost the only content really that I watch on WCN now, of course, is, is your stuff, Max. And just really, you know, from a person without an ec economics background, I just want to say thank you, of course, for putting out all this information because, you know, developers like myself and other geeks and tech uh, geeks, we th this is just so important. Uh, the economics part is just so, so important. So I'm glad that we have people like yourself uh, putting out that kind of content. So Max, what is your thoughts on the discussion so far, the crazy year we've had in Bitcoin, the bear market? Uh, go ahead and let us, uh, you have the floor, let us know what you think. Well, uh, thank you very much, Vortex. That was a nice compliment. And uh, it's it's a nice symbiosis of having uh, the more technical side, right, with devs like you, and then more the economic side uh, and, and bringing that together. Because Bitcoin is not just tech. It's not just economics. It's the symbiosis of all the different fields of study. And it requires this holistic understanding. Um, and uh, yeah, there's so many points brought up. And then I agree, like the price talk, it has stopped for me. Uh, I remember exactly like August 1st, 2017. I have a count on, on my phone. Uh, that was exactly 494 days ago. That was the last time that I seriously checked price. Because uh, afterwards, like, okay, we've won that war. And then with uh, the no 2 x even further. And I was like, oh, fuck the price. It does not matter one bit. And uh, then liberating yourself from all these fiat bags uh, that you're still hodling, uh, if you still have some, and just not worrying about the price anymore liberates you truly to focus on the important stuff. And I mean, partially signed Bitcoin transactions, that's just a, a huge win that we had, uh, honestly. And it's, it's such an underrated thing, because as I, as I uh, held up earlier, like the cold card only works with partially signed Bitcoin transactions. SD card slot right here, completely cold storage. That's insane. That's huge. Uh, then, then further something that is using uh, partially signed Bitcoin transactions is, of course, the Wasabi wallet, which would also not be possible without segregated witness. And Pierce, 1,472 Bitcoin have been made fungible since August 1st, 2018. 1,400 Bitcoin. Are you serious? That is insane. That is literally insane. And we're doing that with two Satoshis per byte? What? I, I mean, it's what, what Adam Napara has done here is, is breathtaking. And the user interface is so stunningly beautiful. Uh, and uh, even with the last update here on version 1.0.2, um, it, it just got even better, uh, much more self-explanatory. And I just enjoy it every single time that I'm uh, coin joining my, my uh, couple of Satoshis. It's, it's just beautiful. And then another software that has also uh, just made a huge leap forward is the BISC decentralized exchange with version 0.9. Uh, which got a complete user interface overhaul. Uh, I just uh, made a step-by-step -step video on that, uh, how to install and use it, uh, make an offer, take an offer and everything uh, on the World Crypto Network. And it's so easy. It's so damn easy. Uh, you literally could set up your account, which is just providing the IBAN address, which is peer-to-peer, end-to-end encrypted, right? Uh, then make an order with two or three clicks, wait a second until someone takes that order, and that's it. Uses peer-to-peer, multi-signature, no, cust no custody ship, uh, no centralized point of failure. It runs all over Tor. It's all end-to-end -end encrypted. And within a couple blocks confirmation, you can get your hands on some nice, nice, nice Bitcoin. I mean, seriously, it's insane. Uh, this is the most beautiful marketplace that we currently have here in Bitcoin because you're not asking for anyone's permission. You're just doing it. And that is just a, such a beautiful marketplace. And it, you know, it has been working for a long, long time. And talking to Manfred, apparently there was not one single Bitcoin being stolen on BISC. Not one single Bitcoin. I mean, that's insane. It's just a game tier works out. It's a beautiful marketplace and I absolutely love it. And then of course, seeing how the Lightning Network develops. And like a year ago, I, I was hacking on the command line, like copy and paste thing. I would, if the payments failed all over the place, no liquidity whatsoever. And just today, I made seven Lightning payments, uh, like from my phone, from a browser extension, like paying one Satoshi, literally like one Satoshi payment and one Satoshi routing fee. Are you serious? Like it's, it's insane. These are not just microtransactions. These are like liberating nano transaction, which confirm instantly for no fee whatsoever, basically. 
our sound lip, our sound money just got instant payment. I mean, are you serious? It's insane. And then also what Francis is doing here with CypherNode and, and making it much more easier to run your own node, which is everything in Bitcoin. And yes, you can you can have a Raspberry Pi, right? That's amazing. Uh, but it's just it's just a slow hardware. And so I, I'm also a huge fan of the Nodal project, uh, which is just a Raspberry Pi on steroids. And we just had a Nodal, which is in a Raspberry Pi box, uh, on a SD card, a 500 gigabyte SD card. And it was syncing 75% of the blockchain in 24 hours. What? Like the, in, the efficiency gains that Bitcoin Core has done over the last year, especially, it's, it's unbelievable with the cheap hardware. And I, I mean, like storage is dirt cheap and the verification is, is so damn fast. It's just breathtaking. There are a thousand and one liberating projects going on. And I mean, where to start? <laughs> Absolutely, man. It is it is breathtaking, really. It's a great word to see the scope of how much thing how many things are being currently worked on in Bitcoin. And just it is just absolutely insane to see how fast blocks get propagated these days. You know, despite there being more nodes, more transactions, despite all of this more activity on Bitcoin, you can sync it faster than ever before. And blocks get propagated faster than ever before. <laughs> like this is just, uh, it really is a testament, uh, you know, to to Bitcoin Core, to just just uh, you know the human engineering mind out there, the people to the open source community, to the people who want this, to the people who really want this to be in existence. They are making sure they are doing everything they can in their power uh, to will this into existence. And it really is great to see. Uh, just a couple other notes, you know, I mean, the segment adoption has been really great this year too. You know, it got over fifty percent. But I think um, the article mentions that really it's it's sort of a bit of an, an an inertia problem where it got up to 50%. And the reason why it's not getting higher is because the businesses simply at this time don't need to really, you know, there's not, there's not really an incentive for them to implement it because the fees are currently so low, but you can rest assured once, once we have another, you know, price run up and the fees get more expensive, I'm sure, very sure the segment of course will increase at that time, but it, it's a bit of an inertia issue. And right now we sort of ran out of inertia where we got around 50%. And that's, that's great. I mean, I, that's, that's beautiful. I, I, uh, more than I could have hoped for, for, for this year. So that's really great to see, especially again, on an open, you know, decentralized network and uh certain you know max mentioned so many great things but i mean there's so many great stuff to work with with lightning we had um the lnd team release that wallet this year the, their beautiful wallet where they integrated lightning and bitcoin seamlessly into the same wallet and it was oh man just just it was really beautiful uh very cosmetically looking like very apple-esque type of graphics so very very great to see and then we we had all these berlin hackadays uh, over there in germany we had hackathons uh lightning hackathons over here in new york we had uh, just crazy amounts of experimentation going on, like Satoshi's place that was just like, just destroying any type of numbers that Ethereum and other D apps put out. It was just hilarious to see Satoshi's place just blow away by 10 X, you know, by a factor of at least 10 plus that um, uh, in, in viewers and, and viewership and numbers uh, to any of the top D apps combined. That was really great to see this year. Uh, then again, got to mention Wasabi one more time, as Max already mentioned it, but it's just so awesome. Just hundreds and hundreds of coin uh, has been now um, been coin joined together. And there's going to be hundreds more and eventually thousands. And this is going to continue. And really, uh, just a point I want to final point I want to make is that really Bitcoin has been the everything coin. Like we've always said it would be. It is the everything coin. It is the privacy coin. It is the, it is the platform coin. It is the currency coin. It is, you know, everything but a stable coin. Everything else, but it's not a stable coin, but everything, it's every other kind of coin that you could ever pretty much imagine. And we're, we're, we're you know, we've been saying people like myself, Francis, we've been saying this for years, but I think now the public as, as the panel has sort of illustrated is starting to finally get it, that Bitcoin really is the platform that the world can uh, rally around and build. Um, it has the network effects and it has the capabilities, it has the technology and it has the community. And that is what's really great to see this people will not stop. Uh, working on Bitcoin until they're dead. And it's really, really just, just really fascinating to watch this play out. So uh, we'll, we'll just do one more uh, final round of comments on this before we go to the next topic. Uh, ben, uh, go ahead, take it away. Yeah, I, I'd like to uh, speak to the, the Wasabi wallet. I've been playing around with that the last uh, few weeks here and and it's wonderful. It's And not only that, but I, I jumped in their Telegram and they've been so responsive and, and you know, I had a, a couple little issues and um, it, it, they've, they've been so quick to respond and and jump on little bug fixes and things like that. And and I've been playing around. I'm getting ready to do a, a, a walkthrough video of how to use Wasabi. And, and I think that's going to be the next uh, one of the next hurdles to tackle is is 
you know, we saw we saw the whole scaling debate, and that was the the FUD that happened in the past uh, few years. I think I think privacy is going to be a big one, and I think what we're going to see is is entities like Coinbase and BitPay and Blockchain.info, those types of companies, those will be the ones probably that push back most vocally because they have a lot to lose. Um, you know, they, they, they're the centralized entities that have to deal with, with regulation and laws. Um, and, and I think that it, they're going to lose again. I, it's, it's inevitable that, you know, the people want what they want. They're going to build what they want and they're going to route around and find a way, uh, to do it. So I'm excited to see that happen. Um, I, I, you know, when it comes to things like Segwit, the other, the other thing, um, with, with Segwit kind of hitting that wall, um, you, I mean, blockchain.info still, they still don't have, like, what are you doing? You, you guys were bitching and moaning about scaling and, and they, they still don't have Segwit. And, you know, it just goes to show that the, the actual reasoning behind them pushing for Segwit 2X was completely different. They just wanted this different devs. They wanted to be in control of Bitcoin. Well, guess what? Didn't pan out. And uh, and everybody with a brain is now trumpeting the fact that they were liars. They didn't do anything to further the ecosystem and were now encouraging people to use alternatives and building alternatives. So it's, it's great to see. And I, I can't wait to see more of their downfall. It is great to, 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 to see all of them. Uh, not just that downfall, but I mean, crazy. It's a Peter, Peter, the CEO of, um, of blockchain.info was one of the most vo vocal people for Segwit2x. And of course, what happened, completely silent, never mentioned Segwit2x, never mentioned anything, never apologized. Coinbase still never apologized. BitPay still never apologized. Blockchain still never apologized for that, uh, for misleading their customers and things like that. So it, it's just really crazy to watch them all just go silent now. Um, but but hey, it, it, we, we got our, our, uh, our, we got our repo. Our repo is intact. It is there, ready to rock at github.com slash Bitcoin slash Bitcoin. It is not BTC one uh, on some centralized server in, so, in Jeff Garzik's office somewhere. So that is of course uh, a great win. Uh, and of course, I also want to mention some of the awesome marketplaces like BISC. We, we mentioned them a little bit, but BISC was great this year. Uh, Max mentioned it. And then HODL HODL, they, they have a great uh, non-custodial uh, exchange that you guys can check out. They're of course a centralized company, but the exchange is non-custodial. So it's really, really great. They make sure that they never you know have, uh, uh, have full access to your funds or anything like that. The systems that they built and put in place are really, really great. Um, um, for, 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 for they're very secure and they're very, very great for sovereignty for making sure that you always are in control of your own fund. So that was really cool. Uh, let's go to Francis again. Uh, Francis, what do you, uh, just final comments uh, before we move on to the next topic? Yeah, so um, I'm not a user of Wasabi now, but I'm definitely going to be a user of Wasabi. And, um, you know, going for from 1,400 coins uh, to a lot more coins is definitely something that's possible because, you know, um, all of Bill's is Bitcoin. I'm seriously considering putting all of them through Wasabi. Uh, I was actually um, using some of the privacy software developed by Samurai, uh, a, an expert called OXT.me. And because we have to deal like at Bill's and, you know, Bitcoin outlet and I'll build Bitcoin. Like, you know, when you operate Bitcoin ATMs and you do brokerage, like you have to deal with exchanges. And a lot of these exchanges have single address deposits still. That's a nightmare i mean seriously like it's so easy to track like bitcoin payments because in the chain of like a, a flow of bitcoin transactions and like business to business transactions if, if one of them has like a single uh address deposit system like that is like a central point of de-anonymization for a lot of people around it um so it is actually quite easy to track like people's bitcoins um manually visually using the uxc.me explorer so um i'm gonna try to make it so that every single bills bitcoins go through wasabi and have privacy by default because you know um if every single uh uh if we do like mixing by default if everybody starts doing mixing by default then a mixed transaction is no longer suspicious, right? So like right now you have a lot of software like Chainalysis software and stuff like that that people are running. And if you have coins out of, a, out of out of a coin join, it's like automatically suspicious. But, you know, if every Bitcoin transaction is, is coin joined, then, you know, they're either all suspicious and all not suspicious, you know, that that's not a factor anymore. Uh, so that's something that's really, really um, important. And um, yeah, so in terms of um, 
I forgot what we were talking about. Uh, oh yeah, sorry, blockchain info. Yeah, just really quickly. Uh, yeah, they're just the worst company in Bitcoin. And like um, Peter is the worst CEO of all time of any company whatsoever. Um, I can't, like, how can you screw that up? Like, how can you screw up? Like they were the first like major wallet to like bring Bitcoin mainstream. And everybody was a fan, you know, 2013 is like, oh, blockchain info is great. And then it took them like two and a half years to like do HD addresses. And I remember speaking to like Nick Gary in like, 2014 and I was like, yo, when BIP32, you know, it's like, and that was like a year and a half later, and like SegWit, like, what the hell are you spending your money on? Like, like your, your, your wallet, you're an open source wallet and explore Like you haven't built new products since like 2014. Like where is the money? Well, the money's obviously in like some Silicon Valley, like massive penthouse office or something. And like, I, I can't believe it. And it's, it's so funny how, like the worst three companies like in Bitcoin, BitPay, Coinbase, and Blockchain Info, like the trio of idiots, um, we are having to rebuild like the first products that we built like four years ago because the people that took over the market are so bad. Like, you know, Blockstream had to release an Explorer. It's like, oh, 2018, you're releasing an Explorer? Like, like that's like, that was cool like five years ago, but they're all so shit that Blockstream's like, fuck, well, we now have to rebuild this stuff because people are using garbage. And you know, it's like we didn't think that we were gonna have to do explorers because you know we're doing side chains, but you know, it's also it sucks. So let's do let's do one. And and you know, like um like Nicola, like building a Bitcoin payment processing app 10 years in. It's like we have to because they're all so crap. Um, so but you know, people should worry, like like people are definitely rebuild like we're re it's like we're rebuilding kind of the core parts of the infrastructure now with the knowledge and mistakes of those other people. And because now it's like really, really urgent that we build it, right? So back in the day, everybody was kind of experimenting, but now we got millions and millions and millions of Bitcoin users. Like, I don't know how many we have. I'm assuming like something like 50 million, 70 million, 30, I don't know, like definitely like tens and tens of million. So now it's like serious, like the tools, like the basic tools, like the wallets, the um, the privacy, the all of that, like it, it's another game now. And these people are not nerds like us anymore. Um, so we need to like do the, these 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 good standard practices by default because people won't do it themselves. Um, so yeah, so I've been super excited to see the whole mentality of like let's rebuild the infrastructure, like let's build the infrastructure. Like that's my motto now. Like um, let's like I, I thought we I thought Bitcoin would get adoption like mass adoption much faster. Um, you know, going to like you know uh, um, hundreds of millions of users like in 2015, you know, when I got in Bitcoin in 2013, um, but I'm kind of happy that it didn't happen so fast because the infrastructure that we now uh, have is subpar. It's like Bitcoin's infrastructure is either economic and some of the software like subpar, but everybody's like, everybody got on it last year. Like everybody got on the train. Okay, like let's build, let's build, let's build. And I think like, we're gonna start to see the, the payoff of that in 2019 when all the new Bitcoin users, they're like, you just get an amazing experience like right out the gate. Um, it's Bitcoin is like a lot more forgiving these days with all these tools that are, that are coming out a lot more secure. Um, so it's like, I definitely feel confident that, you know, sometimes before you scale, you need to be slightly unscalable. You need to 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 really like and try all sorts of different things, and that's been kind of the last years. But I really feel now we have a solid base coming on to take to take on like you know another 150 million Bitcoin users in the next year. If we can, I, I really feel we're technically um, uh, able to do that now, and we might not have have been like a few years ago. So yeah, it's been it's been you know to finish it off. I think that the general sentiment is. It's been a great year in terms of the building. It's been a great year in terms of the uh, like ethics mentality, like kind of cleaning out all the bullshit and like getting our heads straight kind of for what matters going forward. And like, I'm really, 2019 reminds me of 2015, right? So 2015 was the year when there was scaling Bitcoin in Montreal in September. And before that, a lot of the stuff, like a lot of privacy software was being worked on. A lot of the wallets were getting these massive upgrades. A lot of Bitcoin, you know, tech roadmap was being drafted and established. And I kind of feel the same as those years, which is right after the big filter. And the big filter is when like, you know, you got guys like, you know, Andy like capitulated and like a lot of people are like capitulating and like they're just leaving. It's almost as if like the the value proposition of the altcoins was like to drive those people away and like reveal how sh like the shitty people were shitty. Um, so that for the next bull run, like we can, you know, start with a new group of friends, a new group of people. Like 2018, you know, we saw the rise of maximalism and like the maximalist tribe 
you know, coming together. And like people are wearing that shit like on their chest. And it, like we identify with each other. We got all, all sorts of new commentators to the space, all sorts of new super smart bloggers and super smart Bitcoin advocates, like kind of rose to the top, like guys that, you know, I didn't know like a year before. And now I'm reading their stuff just as if I'm reading, you know, like, um, uh, like philosophers or I'm, I'm reading like, you know, you know, these and, and like I'm learning so much from this new group of maximalists that came to the space. So, yeah, I'm pretty, you know, I'm always permeable, you know, I, I've always been super bullish, but Vortex, I'm like so bullish now. It's like crazy. Um, uh, this like and I didn't check the price for about three and a half weeks. I checked it three days ago. Obviously, I was a bit pissed off that the price had dropped so much. But realistically, I really don't even though I'm a broker and I trade every day, like I actually don't think about the price that much or even at all um because in my mind like those bitcoins are for my my grand my grandkids you know my kids they're locked away somewhere and you know what really matters is that that 10 25 fit 10 15 20 years, years down the road where all these fiat currencies collapse and you know we see what was happening in france people can't afford to eat anymore they can't afford anything the price purchasing power keeps uh, go, uh, going down and like, they're blaming all sorts of shit. You know, they blame all the taxes, they blame whatever, they blame inequality, but eventually the gig is going to be up. Like they'll start to blame the central banks. I've already seen a bunch of people put posters up in like these European countries, like fuck the central bank or the European bankers are stealing away our wealth. So people are starting to get it. And like the 10, 15 years down the road, when all of that absolutely crumbles to the ground, I mean, we'll be ready. It's just amazing to see thing around the world and you know these people try to struggle to try to find something to blame but uh at the end of the day really it is just the fiat central banking regime uh that is just completely um sucking you know just like a virus just just um completely entangled uh like a web over the top uh you know a lot of the depictions seem to be really accurate like the squid almost over the top of the uh the the economic uh progress of humanity just just sucking it dry so very interesting uh just so many great points in there francis as usual man killing it uh just a couple things i want to highlight dude uh just mixing by default francis holy crap man if your company starts doing that uh, I think that would be a great thing to lead uh, other companies to do that for for sure for Canada, and hopefully that will uh, transition over to the U.S. at some point. This is what we have to do. I'm almost I'm almost calling on all Bitcoin companies if you can to just you know start using Wasabi Wallet, start mixing by default, mixing these coins by default, so that we don't have to have to worry as much about fungibility uh, in the future when, when we take control of it. Now we don't have to worry about some regulator uh, telling us about it later. So very interesting. And then of course Coinbase, these companies, these these three horrible companies, Coinbase, Blockchain Info, and and BitPay. They are the trio of horribleness in Bitcoin. They continue to do a disservice to Bitcoin. So, uh, you know, uh, we like Francis said, we are literally having to rebuild the tools that were already built back freaking years ago in 2014, 2013, uh, you know, even 2012 almost. We have to rebuild some of these tools because they've been sort of taken over by central places. And that's the beautiful thing about Bitcoin. The network itself has not been taken over and cannot be taken over. And that is why, uh, you know, companies like Coinbase and BitPay can come along. And it doesn't matter because we have people like Nicola Doyer that will build BTC Pay server for, for the community to use and evolve and build the next layer on. So uh, these companies can come and try to push their way around if they'd like their money around but it doesn't quite work in bitcoin so we are rebuilding these tools these, these explorer tools and and um uh, merchant tools and things like and apis like francis the cipher nodes so that we can have uh the next era of bitcoin be built on a, a less much less centralized uh, pla uh you know set of platforms and that's going to be really really interesting to to, to see uh go into fruition as well and then of course you know like Francis said, I mean, we, 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 I agree with Francis. We really are at the point of, we are really technically ready for the next 10 million Bitcoin users. Like we are totally, totally ready. We have Segwit, we have uh, over 50%, we have Lightning, we have all the companies batching. We are really, really, really close, if not ready right now for the next, you know, 10, 50, 10 to 50 million uh, Bitcoin users. We're ready for the next wave. It's going to be crazy. And just one last point, you know, that I think Francis, we are almost in a golden era of Bitcoin podcasts. Almost. There's just so many people that are now creating content and um, just fantastic content too. I mean, the, what Bitcoin did, of course we got noted. So many people came out of just in the last 2016 to now so much new content has come online. Um, and so many new people in the space and so many new maximalists, a whole new era of maximalist people I've never known before. Like, you know, Dan held Nath, uh, you know, Nathaniel Whitmore, uh, Druve, uh, uh, what's his last name? Basil. Uh, it's just crazy. Like all of these people are just amazing to see. And so I'm really uh, excited for the next uh, year of Bitcoin. Let's go to Max. Max, uh, go ahead and close this off, man. This, close this topic off and uh, give us your thoughts.
Well, again, so many good topics covered, and I agree with pretty much everything that was said. And and Ben, uh, like, very nice to see you in the Wasabi Wallet uh, chat on Telegram. And honestly, like this chat has has taught me so incredibly much. I mean. Adam was babysitting me a couple months ago on all the things in Wasabi, and that really helped a lot. Uh, but then, uh, you know, getting all these questions in the chat and talking to the developers there, and just the open community in general. Oh, and I just see that Francis was jo just joined the Wasabi Wallet chat, so good to have you there as well. <laughs> and and seriously, though, know, it's it's really like, all the shit coiners are gone. Like all the weekends are gone. We are the hardcore Bitcoiners left that want to build stuff, that actually want to manifest change and bring sound money to us in our lifetimes. And we will do it. Absolutely. Uh, so, of, of course, man, the, the Telegram and just the, the no bullshit zones in general. Absolutely. And then just on, on scaling, um, I'm, I'm rereading all the Bitcoin Optech newsletters right now and doing an audiobook version on the World Crypto Network. And I just read like version like number four or something where um, they talked about the Xapo consolidation, where they consolidated four million UTXOs uh, to Sequid. And I mean, four million UTXOs are, are now clean. And that's just what good Bitcoin companies can do. You're talking about the triangular of the horrible shit show, shit show companies. Absolutely. But we have these good companies. Um, and then, of course, on, on the other hand, we have something like Blockstream coming up with their amazing like the lizard people are on fire lately, seriously. Like the Blockstream Explorer is just one part which is absolutely like beautiful. And I especially like that it's in dark mode per default. That's amazing. That's like my number one favorite feature. Uh, and uh, what is really, really cool, again, here the open community, because we are trying to put the Blockstream Explorer on the nodal hardware. And we actually made it happen. But it took up 500 gigabytes of storage because it was such just a, a huge database. Uh, then we reached out to them, talked a bit to Larry, and we found out, hey, there's a light mode. Uh, so put the flag light in front of there, it pruned the entire thing. So it's much, much smaller now, much, much more handleable, more attackable versus denial of service. But I mean, it's a local node, right? But now we have the Blockstream open source explorer running on open source hardware with all the rest of open source software on there as well. I mean, it's beautiful. And that's just one of the few products that Blockstream has just recently brought out. And then, Francis, you also said that you were considering um, cleaning your Bitcoin with Wasabi. Well, absolutely. I love that. And that's a perfect idea because companies like yours and, and good Bitcoin maximalist uh, companies and entrepreneurs, individuals, uh, they really can manifest the change here. And Alex Brosworth is doing the same with all his funds from Yalls, uh, which all like per default go through Wasabi now, which is amazing because it provides liquidity and anonymity likes company. Uh, so absolutely, this is this is fantastic. Uh, and increasing the anonymity set, increasing the speed in which the coin chain rounds are happening, it's perfect. We ex absolutely need that. And then Vortex, you also brought up uh, HODL HODL, which is, uh, of course, like the, in my opinion, like the number two exchange. Number one, unfortunately, has to go to BISC because it's just such a beautiful agorist marketplace. But I mean, on the other hand, like HODL HODL, they, I mean, the Baltic honey badger. Come on, like that, that already, like that, that made it there. <laughs> Well, but they're, crank they're cranking it out as well, right? They have the two out of three multi-sig wallets now, which is amazing. Uh, they got their prediction markets rolling out, which is also fantastic, and working on their house huddle, uh, where you can buy and sell houses with Bitcoin in a multi-sig vault. I mean, it's there is so much amazing stuff happening, and we're just getting started. I mean, Bitcoin is just 10 years ago old. It's not, I, I wouldn't count it as an experiment anymore because it actually like really is working. But, I mean, damn, it's... It's strong and, and people are yapping on about the price. But I mean, come on, seriously, like who gives a shit about the price? Now, uh, <laughs> I'm right with you there, Max. Of course, um, I try not to care about the price, but of course, unfortunately, it's it's a, it's a always going to be a, right there tied to Bitcoin um, that we nothing we can do about it. But man, uh, just great to hear again, uh, Max, all the great points, all the great things that are coming out. Man, buying houses with Bitcoin, that is uh, in a multi-sig. I mean, that's, that's like, this is what we've been trying to tell people that um, Bitcoin is going to revolutionize the planet. I mean, one day, everything will be on top of, the, of Bitcoin's blockchain, just like uh, Andrea said, with the infrastructure and version. You know, I mean, this is how it's, it's going to be because it has the most security. It is uh, has the most history, uh, the most trusted. I mean, this it's it's pretty simple. It's the most trusted and secure you know financial network on the planet, most secure you know trusted financial network that we've ever had in the history of mankind. So it makes sense that again, these types of things will eventually you know. Um, uh, 
consolidate on on, on the on where it makes sense, on where it logically makes sense, and that of course uh, is Bitcoin. So I think we can uh, go on to the next topic. Actually, um. Before we do that, guys, just make sure to share off the show. We've actually almost used the whole show. I think we're just going to probably talk about uh, the bull Bitcoin after this. So, uh, But before we do that, guys, just make sure to share off the show. We really appreciate everybody uh, um, be here. We're having a great time in the chat. If you guys missed us live, definitely make sure to check us out uh, in the comments below. But if you are audio listening, we'd really appreciate it if you guys could give us a review over there on iTunes. And if you guys are watching on YouTube, please uh, make sure to give us a thumbs up. And if you guys are new to the channel, always subscribe and make sure to hit that. Uh, make sure to hit the bell. The bell will let you know, guys, uh, to, to whenever we have a new show. So uh, let's go on to the, the, the final topic. I want to talk a little bit about Francis's new company, uh, Bull Bitcoin, a little bit here just to, at, at the tail end of this show. Francis, uh, if you want to just give us a bit of a description, and I'm, I'm actually going to bring up the website too, but uh, go ahead. Yeah, so so Bull Bitcoin is a is a merger, actually a merger of, uh, of Satoshi Portal and uh, uh, Bitcoin Grain. So... Um, I think, uh, you know, some of our li listeners like know what Satoshi Portal is, but like that's my uh, um, financial uh, services and applications development company out of Montreal that does only Bitcoin. So um, we're kind of known for doing the, the Bills uh, app, which is um, a, a, an app which allows every Canadian to, to pay their bills and send money with Bitcoin. So that's kind of that's Canada's first and largest Bitcoin payment processor. And, uh, you know, Bitcoin outlet is like a Coinbase equivalent where uh, people can link their bank accounts and like buy Bitcoins online. Um, and, you know, uh, Bitcoin Grains was one of the was the first ever Bitcoin store in the world. Actually, Bitcoin Brains was like before the Bitcoin embassy, like in 2013. And they're like Alberta's biggest Bitcoin brokers, basically. So we're merging all of these um, companies and projects together. Uh, but most importantly, we're also getting like a bunch of the Bitcoin maximalists in Canada, you know, like Benny, uh, Dave and I kind of uh, have uh, been leading the charge and some others that might be joining us, you know, in the near future. Um, uh, we're, we're getting all of the kind of OG maximalist entrepreneurs and activists like together and, and unite. And the objective for Bull Bitcoin, so Bull Bitcoin is a merger of these companies. And it's not, gonna, it's not we're also releasing the Bull Bitcoin app um, next week. So the Bull Bitcoin app will be um, a, a combination of some of the different software that we already have right now and some new features. And it's going to be just like Coinbase and just like BitPay. So, you know, you're going to log in, um, you're going to, you know, send fiat there um, and, you know, you're going to buy Bitcoins. You're going to be able to spend your Bitcoins. We're launching a, a merchant um, API to replace BitPay in Canada. So using, you know, the Bills backend, which already works pretty well for merchants. Um, but we're launching the API so that it's fully automated and fully integrated in like all the WooCommerce and online checkouts. Um, we're also launching a peer-to-peer -peer invoicing system that's going to be um, free if you're using Bitcoin um, and, and you know uh, you know anonymous. Like you can you don't need to be, even be a user of Bull Bitcoin to use uh, uh, the the invoicing system, which is going to basically just help people track the price and generate addresses and have like a safe way to to send Bitcoins to each other instead of like you know texting your friend like a Bitcoin address. And like an amount or something like that or a rate uh, we're going to automate all that but we're also going to do a a peer-to-peer -peer invoicing system with con fiat conversion um so yeah bold bitcoin is going to be kind of the we hope to be the the coinbase and bitpay alternative for canadians and you know the reason why we decide to go um uh, this route and i like, continue doing that is because you know i was super inspired by by jack mallers and by some of the other like um younger cypherpunks in the space which really showed me like you can build these tools and embed your own values and your own dna in this tool and that tool will be used by other people and like the culture and society that's like built around bitcoin will be heavily influenced by like the actual apps that people use on a day-to-day -day basis you know embedding like your favorite best practices in the software and the and and that you know bitcoin is not a democracy you can't vote coinbase out right bitpay sucks like bitpay is the worst i hate bitpay so much like whenever i use bitpay i'm so pissed off i'm so pissed off i'm sometimes recording myself like just going through the terrible ux of bit 70 and i'm just like oh it's so frustrating like no wonder like people are not spending bitcoin on the internet it's not because the bitcoin is it just bitpay sucks and like all the merchants they're like oh but isn't bitpay like the biggest and best bitcoin company like they probably all think that bitpay is like the best that bitcoin has to offer because it's literally BitPay, like it's the BitPay company. If you're not a Bitcoiner, you probably think that Bitcoin sucks just because BitPay sucks, right? It's a terrible experience. And like, I don't want to live in a world where like the merchants, I have to, I, I hate to use BitPay. So that's, I want to be like, we're going to be the, the anti Brian Armstrong. I, I want to be the anti Brian Armstrong. Like that, that's my goal in life. Like I want to be as far away 
um, uh, from him as I can and from Stephen Pear and from Peter Smith. And, you know, uh, we're pretty stoked. So um, right now, Bull Bitcoin is is that makes it the biggest broker. I think we're we're probably the biggest brokerage in Canada by by volume. And we are going to go super big and super hard, like really, really soon. So we're kind of moving away from the uh, garage startup that we were. Um, like, you know, and, and Dave is like, you know, a, a small operation that does a lot of volume, a lot of clients, but like we were a bunch of pretty small operations, but now we got a lot of institutional backing. Like a lot of people are pretty stoked about the project and I really can't wait to like show what we're going to do this year. But for sure, I mean, we're, we're, we're here to take over the, the Canadian retail market and Bitcoin and, um, yeah, it's going to be a, a really great project. And, um, we're pretty confident that the community is backing us and, and that we have the support of the Canadian Bitcoiners. Uh, which is really important for us and we're you know the kind of point is also like we're not going anywhere like you know we've been here for a while and yeah we're, we're all tired and we're all burnt out um but we're not going anywhere like we definitely plan on on staying and when when the next bull run happens um people are going to be using you know people are not going to be using coinbase in canada there's going to be no reason for them to use coinbase um what all the services that we are for, offer will be better than coinbase's and not only that like the money that we are going to be making from from those transaction fees and from 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 the from this business that's stuff that goes directly back into CypherNode. that's stuff that goes directly back in the ecosystem and also we're going to be holding bitcoin bull bitcoin bull bitcoin's goal is to hold as many bitcoins as possible as humanly possible like that's why we created this company and everybody that's in bull Bitcoin is a total committed long-term holder. And, you know, if we ever do end up getting um, uh, right now is everything has been self self financed. But if we do get uh, or seek out investors, it's going to be investors that are investing in Bitcoin and that are hoping to get more Bitcoins out of the Bitcoins they invest in us. But I mean, the message is going to be really clear that we are absolutely tied to Bitcoin success. And you know the best we can do is outperform Bitcoin's returns, which we are you know doing and that, like we plan to continue to do to do. But it's really gonna be like the goal of this company is to make Bitcoin and to make Bitcoin great, right? So make Bitcoin more valuable and for everyone and ourselves, and make more Bitcoins for ourselves. And you know if company had if a lot of companies had the same mentality of getting to business to make more Bitcoins to hold long term, then obviously we wouldn't have like blockchain that infos like. Like, imagine if I had like a hundred million dollars, like Peter Smith did or something like that, a VC money, like, you think I would, you know, fuck it up like he did? Of course not, because I'm holding up everything in Bitcoin and I'm all in on Bitcoin and the company is all in on Bitcoin. So, you know, this gets the incentives like straight in and they stop having these, these weird incentives with all those, those, those shit coins and all those blockchain tech consortiums and deals that they're doing. And hopefully, you know, Bull Bitcoin is like a business philosophy a little bit. And there's a bunch of other companies out there that have a similar kind of business philosophy, but it, like, we're really trying to create, like, I don't want to use Joe Lubin's words of like, consensus is not a company, it's a movement. Um, but I kind of, I really don't like to say that, but I kind of feel like that, you know, it's like cypherpunk maximalism as a business philosophy, right? That's the goal. Cypherpunk maximalism as a business philosophy. I like it, Francis. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> anything that is the anti Brian Armstrong, Stephen Pear, you know, Stefan Pear and Peter Smith is good for me because, I mean, uh, they have, of course, uh, just completely screwed up their companies, completely screwed up uh, uh, their companies in the Bitcoin space. Their reputations are now completely just jacked for anybody who, who's in Bitcoin, who, who, you know, has been, who's been here longer than six months. Uh, it's really crazy. All of these guys, you know, uh, Brian, Stefan, Peter, <coughs> Stefan, they, they, they all pretty much sold most of their Bitcoin, you know, for Ethereum and BCH and other bags and things like that, which is, of course, why they continue to push those altcoins in those bags. Uh, so it's really, really crazy to see. But it sounds like, uh, you know, you guys are really trying to be the antithesis to these companies. So uh, an API to replace BitPay, an exchange to replace, you know, Coinbase, um, you know, brokerages and invoices. Uh, this is really, really great stuff, Francis. I want to see uh, what Benny's opinions are because I believe Benny is working there, too. So, uh, Benny, let's get your thoughts. And then I want to... I just want to do a quick shout out to Huddle Huddle because um, yeah, yeah. as Max said, um, when I talk about some of the other companies that I think have cypherpunk maximalism as a business uh, uh, philosophy, I actually talked to Huddle Huddle because like, I saw that they got an investment of Bitcoins from Bitcoin OGs. And that's always like what I thought that if I ever do get investors, because um, uh, I don't like to have strings attached, but if I do get investors, it would be directly from some of the cypherpunk Bitcoin OGs that have a bunch of Bitcoins that want to invest in that. And I talked to Huddle a little, a little bit about that. And um, yeah, I just wanna, that we're not the only ones. 
and Huddle Huddle, other than doing like a great software, um, I, I think like they have a, a really similar business philosophy. Sorry, sorry for interrupting, but I just that I just forgot to make this this shot. Yeah, it's true, man. There there is a bunch of companies out there with type with this type of uh, mentality philosophy. I'm sure Samurai Wallet also has this type of philosophy. And uh, again, guys, these are the companies that you need to look for. These are the companies you need to invest in. These are the companies that are going to be the new Fang stocks. The companies that do not ask for permission. I mean, even companies like Uber. You know, these are the type of companies that that don't ask for permission. They uh, they they innovate first and ask for permission later. That is really um what's what's really great about uh, these types of companies. And uh, those are the companies that I of course encourage people to. to to pay attention to and if you uh, want to invest in so really really great comments uh francis benny again uh, let's go with you i know that you're working over there so let's get your thoughts on this and then we'll go to max yeah uh so so i i learned a lot from francis early on and and one of the i guess uh philosophies that i've come to learn is is skin in the game and and uh, that that not only applies to um you know, holding Bitcoin because you believe in Bitcoin, but I believe that can apply to the trajectory of your actual career. And so I made a major career shift in moving to Francis and Dave's company um, in that I was, I have worked with lots of other crypto Bitcoin companies, but um, to really have my skin in the game, I, I needed to support a company that is only Bitcoin. I, it it to me feels disingenuous to be a maximalist and to be working at a place that is also selling coins that that I think are trash, right? Like I don't I don't want to be out there peddling Bitcoin cash. Like I don't want to be peddling Bcash to people. I don't want to be selling ETH. I don't want to be selling Ripple. You know, I I I need to. How about that sweet sweet brodium? <laughs> <laughs> Brodium, all right. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I just, you know, you have to, you have to actually get some skin in the game and and exude the values um, in your everyday life. And so I, I, I made this shift, and and I'm genuinely excited. Like it, we get to now. I, I don't have to censor what I'm saying. I don't have to. If somebody asks me about a coin other than Bitcoin, I can straight up tell them that it's trash, and I can tell them why. And, and that's so liberating. It's so wonderful to be able to come out and, and say, no, this is, this is why Bitcoin is the one. These are the qualities that, that give it um, what everything else does not have and why it's going to stand the test of time. And I get, to, I get to get a front row seat and be part of history in the making. And, and I, again, I can't thank Francis enough for, for reaching out and, and having me. Um, and, you know, I've known Dave a long time. He was the first person I met in person um, when it came to Bitcoin. And, and he was nothing but gracious and he taught me a lot as well. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm really happy to, to be part of a company whose morals and, and, and um, I guess roadmap really really line up with my beliefs everything that Fran like when francis called me to make the offer we had a three hour conversation which i guess isn't that surprising when you're talking about francis but <laughs> we had a three hour conversation about his his vision for what he wanted to do and i got off the phone and my ear hurt so much but i was so happy because we had such a good conversation about about you know our our beliefs and what we wanted to do and and anything i can do to be a part of that is is incredible and i can't think of a better company to be working for so um uh yeah i'm and i'm really excited for some of the content we want to pump out here too in the coming coming months and years so yeah 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 man i tell you uh once my client work dies down i might have to might have to move up there to Canada or something. I don't know. I might have. Yeah, yeah. To, <laughs> I'm gonna have to persuade Francis to hire me. I think probably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and I just want to highlight what Benny said. We're gonna create good content. And like bull Bitcoin is really just an excuse to make a lot of memes. And <laughs> a really large budget to like make these outrageously sophisticated memes and 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 fu and funny funny content and and you know really create a kind of um, a culture around maximalism, like that's definitely part of our plan. And, you know, uh, just before I, I offered the job to Benny, like we were talking about, and I'll never forget what he said. And that was like, nailed it right away. He said, 
I want to work for a company that is unapologetically maximalist. And I was like, <laughs> oh, we're speaking the same language. That was great. Um, so this is, you know, this is the philosophy. You know, um, I when when you're when you're building a company, the most important thing that I see you can do is choose the, choose the team. Um, that that's that's what it what it comes down to. That that's pretty much it. Like choose the people that you're gonna uh, be standing next to when the shit hits the fan. And like, you know, that's that's how you that's how you create a an institution that has values that last just beyond like one person, right? So um, having this this culture um, that is encouraging people to really like not censor themselves and and be unapologetic unapologetically maximalist means that even after I'm gone, if I am gone one day and you know. Well, Bitcoin, like our, our plan is not to like, we don't have like an exit strategy. Like our, our, our exit strategy is to like make Bitcoins, right? So like hopefully like in like 30 years, like bull Bitcoin is like, you know, the equivalent of like a, a big bank or something or a big financial institution. Like people still use it, um, you know, they're, and after the original founders are, are maybe after it scales to a super high level, um, we really hope that these these values are going to be there, there, there forever. So like we like to say like, we're not, competing with Coinbase on price or on quality necessarily because I realistically like at some point you can make a really good Bitcoin app but you know there's 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 a limit to what Bitcoin is I mean you you buy Bitcoin online with a bank transfer at some point like the app gets really good but we're going to be coin, competing with Coinbase on the ethics that's that's going to be uh, uh, the way that, that we want to compete and I think in this space people are using brands very ethically, very consciously, because Bitcoiners know that they can't vote for what happens. People tend do tend to to um, uh, to to vote kind of like or to use an app based on on the ethics and the the and but I mean ethics and in, in software that's just like like standards right or like business standards or 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 best practices or that kind of stuff. So you know the the idea is we want to cater to the other Bitcoin maximalists that are that are out there because. When someone chooses a, a Bitcoin app, they don't Google it. Like they get, they ask their friend that they trust, like which app should I use, right? And I want to be, I want people to say like, like genuinely, like use bull Bitcoin. Like these are the good guys. Um, don't fucking use Coinbase. These guys suck. Like use bull Bitcoin. They're good guys. They won't like you can trust them. Like I, I want the 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 heavily invested people in Bitcoin to spontaneously refer me to their friends when their friends ask where they can get Bitcoin or how they can use it. So that's kind of like, you know, it, we're building this company so that other Bitcoiners are proud of us. That's kind of like our driving force. And that's not just for ego. That's like a marketing strategy. But I think that's the correct way to do it. Yeah, I, I wanted to. It's a good marketing sorry, strategy. Go ahead, Ben. I, I wanted to put in one other little point is, is that the timing of of this launch and us coming out and and telling everybody what we're aiming to do now is is so perfect because you know we're it's it's been a year long bear market so far and we're 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 noticing that people feel disenfranchised because they were sold bs and lies and you have companies like coinbase that are promoting these trash coins and sending out emails. Oh, what's up with Ethereum? Why is it so cool? Why should you buy it? it, it they're, they're promoting absolute trash to people and people are getting privy to it. They're starting to understand. And uh, when Francis did his speech in, in Calgary here the, the other day, I, I saw some guys in the audience that I had seen a year before um, around summertime, and, and these guys were huge into every alt you could, you could get into. And f at the end of Francis's speech, the guy was like, holy shit, I'm so jacked, and we need more honest people like this in the industry. And, and they were sold. The second that Francis laid out why we're doing what we're doing, people people appreciate honesty and and this is the perfect time to come out and say hey you know people have been selling you lies they've been selling you hopes and dreams and and nothing of, su of substance in fact we even we <laughs> we had a drink list at the uh, at the event and uh the names of the drinks were like satoshi splash the the Bitcoin brew. And then the last one was the shitcoins Shirley Temple. And under the description, it said nothing of substance and it was going for 3750. <laughs>
<laughs> so which was hilarious. Absolutely. And, uh, I got to get Max in here. Max, we got to get you. We got to get your opinion here at some point, man. I'm really here, uh, uh, curious to see what you think of this company and uh, and the, the the discussion so far. Go ahead, Max. Oh yeah, Ben, you're 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 absolutely right, Ben. Uh, this this speech by Francis was like the the most exhilarating. No bullshit. We're gonna change the world and get out of our way or collaborate. Uh, it was it was fantastic. I enjoyed every second of it, and it it was it was really it, it came from the heart. This <laughs> this was no ICO shill fest. Um, you, you, you're talking about the exit strategy. Well, guess what? It's not gonna be an ICO. <laughs> and uh, th this really, you know, you you feel this type of passion, and you know that it's not bullshit. And that is something that is that is really important. And I've, I've been contemplating on this for a while now. And I think this this ethical open source entrepreneurship, where first and foremost your your heart is at the right place, and and you know that you have to collaborate and and share uh, the ideas and and the theories behind this technology first and foremost, and then of course build and advance it, and not build vaporware nonsense bullshit, but actually manifest true change that is in accordance with your inner core feelings uh, of liberty and freedom. Uh, and this just builds such a profound momentum uh, that, oh my, Coinbase is scared shitless. <laughs> uh, so, so absolutely. And, and the aspect of having skin in the game, another great aspect that, that Ben brought up here, is, is so absolutely true. Uh, and and I, I realized that myself when when I sold my last fiat bags on uh, like again 495 days ago after UASF, uh, when you when you truly are all in and it it changes your entire mindset. When we talk about having a low time preference, thinking seven generations ahead, but it it's not a joke. Like this is actually what happens when you are on a full sound money mindset, and it it like, it's tough. I, absolutely. And it's nothing easy. It's not for cowards. No, absolutely not. But those that are courageous enough of taking this step, of claiming their liberty, it's like the, the feeling is ineffable. And you know, it's it's of course Bitcoin or bull Bitcoin that that has this mindset, but other companies as well. Like you talked about Hoddle Hoddle, absolutely. And I mean Max and Roman, they they don't have a fiat bank account. Like none. They are Bitcoin only company, not even shit coins, not even fiat shit coins, which is the biggest shit coin of them all. They're like nothing, sound money all the way. And we wonder why they actually build useful stuff and why they organize amazing conferences. Yeah, that's why. It's ethical open source entrepreneurship. They got their heart at the right place. They got their morals straight. They know what is right and what is wrong. And they focus on what is right and what will bring prosperity to humankind. And then they put all the effort that they can in it. And that is what creates good companies, good ethical companies. And I mean, individuals and entrepreneurs. It's not just that this is a huge conglomerate uh, with just the brand and no faces behind it. No, it's actually individuals working there, individed peers in the network that present themselves as sovereign nodes. I mean, that is, that is something that just... It, it's something that sound money emerges. Uh, so, so absolutely. And and talking about the meme wars. Oh, oh, hell yeah! Bitcoin is all about that uh, because you know speech is something profoundly powerful. Uh, well, the word exists because of manifested speech, and this also means that wh when you have your thoughts in accordance to your heart, and you act upon that, uh, and you speak in accordance with your core beliefs. Your speech is powerful as hell. And yes, that's like blabbering along on, on podcasts like we do right now. And yes, that includes memes and hats and all that stuff. But most definitely, it includes code. Because code is the most powerful form of speech that we can use in order to liberate humankind. And having all this power manifested in Bitcoin itself, is, it's breathtaking. And it's, it's an absolute joy to spend every second of life in, in, in mindset. 
It's true, man. It's it's. Uh, I like to say, you know, like uh, Pierre kind of uh, put this idea in my mind, but man, we're in the trenches together. We are all in the trenches. It's not like competition. We're not competing with each other. We're simply in the trenches together. We're all huddled together, uh, providing covering fire to try to allow Bitcoin to get out the front door. You know, as Bitcoin sign guy says, this is this is, this is basically what we're all in this together for. And um, you know, it's. It is great to see some of these companies like Bull Bitcoin now try to compete on ethics because we've seen some of these big companies like we've talked about earlier. They, they went the wrong way ethically. And so now they're going to get competition uh, from people who have a, a, another voice. And it's really interesting to just just to watch. I mean, um, because all we can really do is vote with our BTC and our time, right? We, we If you want a wallet to succeed, you download it and you use it. So we vote with our Bitcoin and we vote with our use. And this is um, how we are going to take over the world. This is how Bitcoin is going to continue working is people are going to use Bitcoin instead of fiat and it is sad to see some of these old ogs go you know go the altcoin route but that's uh, we, we as we spoke about earlier we see a whole new round now of bitcoin ogs the next bitcoin ogs uh, the, the next people that we're going to call bitcoin ogs come into the space we've seen these people write amazing articles we've seen them uh, build companies and this uh, is is going to provide a whole new uh, platform of people that's going to bring in a whole new round of people of course for the next bull run and thinking several generations ahead this is this is this is the low time preference that Safedian talks about in his book, The Bitcoin Standard. This is what big, most Bitcoiners really believe in, is this low time preference, is this ability to store value uh, for the next generation, to use yesterday's money to build tomorrow's future. That is sort of a big, huge mindset of what we're all about uh, in Bitcoin. And, you know, it's funny to watch people call us lucky, you know, despite having to hold through all these crazy 80 and 90% plus, you know, falls time and time again. I think this is Bitcoin's fifth fall now, fifth big fifth major correction over 80%, you know, uh, it's not super easy, but the fundamentals are there and we are there every day because we know the alternative. The alternative, of course, is the traditional financial system. That is what we are fighting against. So this, we are going to, whatever it takes, continue to keep this exit sign alive, this, this optional, finally, this, this option that people can have, we're going to make sure to keep that alive. Uh, and, and we're going to do that, whatever it takes. So just with, with this great ethic, open source entrepreneurship that Max described. So great, great show guys. Lots of great stuff that we talked about. I, we, we covered it all. We went over a, a bit over an hour there, but uh, I think we got all the topics covered. So thank you guys so much. You guys were all really, really great. Um, just tell us now where we can find out more about you, Max, go ahead. Where, where can we find out more about you? Uh, well, I'm, I'm doing uh, lots of stuff on the World Crypto Network, uh, mainly focusing on Austrian economics, uh, but also some of the technical stuff. And I, I really want to I want to get the, the technicals as well. And, uh, you know, I'm an agorist. I believe in voluntary interaction first and foremost and cutting out state and aggression and violence wherever I can in my life. And that's why I'm so incredibly proud uh, to present software like Wasabi Wallet, like the BISC exchange, like the Noddle uh, node. I mean, it's uh, this is truly what can and what will liberate humankind. Uh, and so a bunch of shows there, and I'm, I'm like really hyped for, for reading the Bitcoin Optech newsletter. Um, it's just a plethora, like a wealth of resources and information, uh, which, you know, accumulate the good stuff. Uh, don't read shitcoin white papers. Read the Bitcoin Optech newsletter. <laughs> You're going to take so much more of that. Uh, so absolutely. And, and maybe as a little uh, way, way out, just a book that has like tr a truly like moved me like deeply in my heart was uh, a book by uh, Paul Rosenberg, uh, The Lodging of Wayfaring Men, uh, which was written in the 1980s and just talks about what, what we can build here, what is a possibility of having a, well, cypherpunk utopia, free marketplaces of free individuals interacting peacefully and cooperatively in cyberspace. And I mean, it's here. Like, we have it. This is our chance. And if we fuck this up, that's not good. Uh, so re reading this book and again, like having in front of my eye the, uh, the chance and the opportunity that we have here gave me so much strength and power. So I cannot recommend you enough. Like that's my, my daily book uh, recommendation, A Lodging of Wayfaring Men by Paul, Paul Rosenberg, a hero. Uh, and uh, not just of, of Bitcoin, but of cypherpunk and freedom in general. Awesome. And yeah, I definitely shout out to the Bitcoin Optech newsletter. Everybody needs to be subscribed to that. They have uh, great, great uh, information, great uh, updates to, you know, the latest 
um, code check-ins to the issues that are going around to all sorts of stuff. It's really, really designed to, to uh, help people who are in the Bitcoin space. Uh, so really, really check that out. And of course, the Cypherpunk Utopia, Max, that's uh, that's the dream. That's, that's the dream of the Cypherpunks. And we're trying to make sure that that becomes a reality with Bitcoin. And really today, it really is uh, with Bitcoin. People can transact from all over the world, anywhere in the world with Bitcoin, any, anywhere with internet connection. And of course, now we're getting beautiful Bitcoin blocks streamed down upon us 24-7 with the blocks stream satellites and uh we're looking forward to more and more progress with that so uh francis where can we find out more information from you sir obviously on twitter um i've uh, i've actually cured my twitter addiction over uh, over my vacation i uninstalled twitter uh and but i'm still posting i'm still posting so you can uh, but not as much uh you can see me on twitter at francis Pouillot underscore um so check out uh we just ripped up the bull bitcoin website uh really quickly before we launch like the app like the actual app website which has a bunch of stuff on it uh, but you can go check out uh, bullbitcoin.com um benny we and i just started a a youtube channel um bull bitcoin so my speech is there but we're going to be posting some content there um quite regularly hopefully um some some funny stuff but also some educational stuff and just our news and all that kind of stuff um so also um yeah follow me on medium uh i have a medium account i don't have many many articles on medium but definitely follow me on medium because we're going to be doing a bunch of announcements and that's usually where i'll be posting um so on twitter and medium like obviously if you're following me on twitter i'll be posting it there too um yeah that's it so twitter medium and youtube bull bitcoin and francis Puglia. Rock and roll, bull Bitcoin for the win, people. All right, Benny, where can we find out more about your amazing channel, BTC Sessions, and yourself? Yeah, uh, so you can find me in a lot of places, but uh, Twitter and YouTube tend to be the best. So in both places, I'm just BTC Sessions. Uh, Twitter, yeah, just at BTC Sessions. Um, obviously, check out bullbitcoin.com. I'm going to be uh, helping a lot with the content uh, on the YouTube channel for Bull Bitcoin as well uh, as we get rolling with that. And um, yeah, I think that's probably the most, I mean, I have a Facebook page, but like, Crypto Facebook is a dark place. Don't go there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'd say Twitter is, is I'm on there all the time and I'm very responsive there. So that's the best place. And I do have a website actually, uh, btcsessions.ca. So you can also check me out there. Awesome, Benny. Well, thanks so much, guys, for joining. We really appreciate you guys coming on the show. Sunday's, of course, a time of normal relaxation, but these guys donate their time. So we really, really appreciate you guys and your opinions. And of course, your continued work in the Bitcoin space. You guys all are doing inspiring work. We really, really appreciate it. Lots more to come, I'm sure, from all you guys. And of course, there'll be lots more to come from CryptoCast Network as well, guys. We have a lot of shows on the network already. You know, we, we, we just put out this week, we put out the um, uh, new perspective, a new dis uh, a new deciphered, a new... Um, um, Bitcoin Matters with Beauty on, of course, and of course, this new Bitcoin news show, which we're going to have here every Sunday, as we always do at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern time. So again, guys, thanks so much for joining us. Until next time, please keep talking Bitcoin, and we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.